This video was brought to you by a better planner, Ken Power, Marcus Biel, Stormberg, and Biel Componente. Yo, what's up? We are now at the El electric boat uh, um, marina in Oslo. And uh, today I have Carl here. We're going to look at another boat. So, yeah, you guys have seen maybe some electric boats in the past. We have actually Cruiser, we have Candela in the past. But today we're going to look at a different technology. It's called, uh, what is it called again, Carl? Air cushion or surface effect ship. There we go. Okay, so uh, first of all, here is the ship, oh, and the, the boat. And then maybe Carl, uh, what is your role in this company? So my name is Carl Ren, I'm the CEO of Pascal Technologies, and we work with this air cushion technology that basically increases energy efficiency to accelerate electric boats. Okay, so what is special about this Pascal boat here versus the other ones around here? Yeah, so this boat has a fan in the front that, that blows air in underneath the hull and, and fills this cavity and that reduces the friction on water, like, like air hockey, if you play this game. And this takes down the resistance uh, by up to about 50%. Whoa, 50%, well, I see. Wait, I'm uh, so about 70% of the, of the wet surface area is, is then uh, covered with air, and that reduces the friction. So that's, that's basically how it, how it works. I want to check something here. So if I go over here, oh, there's a fault. Okay, well, how, what is this? Um, I'm gonna show you here. If we go over here, Okay, so you can see, now it's hard to see it, but in the front there's some, there's some inlets. Yeah, let's go back here. So how is that compared to, for example, one of these cruiser uh, boats here? Yeah, so this is a V-hull vessel, which is 99% of the boat market to, <laughs> today is conventional, um, conventional V-hulls. And then you have also CES, surface effect ships, and you have uh, hydrofoils. So those are the three types of vessels. And these technologies are, are not new. They actually are uh, developed after, they were developed after the Second World War. And uh, for example, the Norwegian Navy uses uh, surface effect ships. But that is to increase range and speed with diesel. While we primarily focus on uh, using this for, for electric vessels. So many people want to know now, how big is the battery in that uh, Pascal? The battery is 126 kilowatt hours. Wow. And, and we are using Evoy 150 horsepower outboard. So we are complementary to, to, to boat builders and motor producers. We can collaborate with any boat builder or motor producer. So we can kind of connect to the existing value chain and uh, help boat builders go electric faster. But you have twice as big battery as uh, Candela. They go for 69 kilowatt hour uh, uh, Polestar battery. So, but then it means that this one is probably less efficient than the hydrofoiling. It's, it's, it's heavier. It's a, it's a larger, bigger vessel uh, with double the battery. So it, it's heavier. Uh, we could, of course, have one battery in this boat. No problem. Uh, so that's, that's how it's designed right now. Um, and more importantly, we can scale with, with different boat types and companies. So usually, I mean, in contrast to cars, which are usually exactly the same size, Boats are in a variety of sizes, and therefore we need to have a scalable uh, model with different uh, battery sizes and, and propulsion setups. So we, we can collaborate with Evoy, with, with Mercury, with Honda, with whoever wants to, 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 to use our technology to, to increase range. And we can also significantly reduce the, the, the battery uh, effect. So usually when you have regular boats going into planing speeds, it, it, it's a very high uh, C, C rate that is needed. So you need to discharge a lot of power from the battery, and that's a lot of heat issues. So it's, it's much easier to go electric when you have more efficient technology. As so you here we have the Type 2, but also CCS. Ooh! <laughs> and this, what, what, is the, what is the maximum charging power on this boat? I think around 100 or 150 kilowatt Whoa. as of now. <laughs> But yeah. we use, like, this is constraints from the battery supplier. So, and the battery suppliers, I mean, it's the same type of cells as like Tesla or whatever other EVs use. So it's, I mean, it's, it's usually around the same charging speed as the automotive uh, companies. Okay, but, but okay, we will test this. Uh, I think we have roughly 60% charge. And we have the Kempower uh, Mobile T over here. We're gonna test it, it's 40 kilowatt. I, I haven't seen a boat DC charging force. So this is gonna be, my first time. 
but we're on the move and now we are just cruising uh, in, in the bay uh, in the in our here we, we have speed limits so yeah right now it's just doing the the regular stuff right nothing special there and okay yeah speed up a little bit there's some display over there we can take a look at it uh, later but uh well, is this boat some kind of standard boat? This is a prototype that we got constructed to, to prove and develop the technology for this size. It's, it's a leisure boat, but we, we work with several projects with boat builders, established boat builders, like Moon Marine, Nimbus Group, Alukin, and uh, Nordkap, where they will develop electric boats based on our technology, but with, with their production and design and, and distribution, because they know how to build boats and, 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 and deliver them to customers. Hmm. And uh, in fact, one, uh, one of the projects called Ripple Boats is a new brand from the Nordkap Friedenbø family. They're, they're an established large player in the Nordics here. They build uh, more than a thousand boats per year. And uh, that actually, that project is actually now on a deal flow crowdfunding. Uh, so, so if you're interested in supporting the electric boating uh, business, then it's an opportunity to invest there. Yeah, just go check out the video description. There'll be a link to it. Okay, now we're in the in the unrestricted zone. Yeah, it sounds crazy. But it's like an autobahn. Yeah. <laughs> so now we can hammer it. So you see, now we are cruising. We're increasing speed now. Okay, so what's going on now, Carl? So now we go into planing speeds and then now the fan engages uh -huh. and we lift out of water and we accelerate and this is it. So now we are actually hoovering on the air cushion. So there, I hear a little bit of noise maybe from the front. This is the thing This working. is the fan in the front and uh, for the production versions this will be absolutely silent. Wow, look at that. So the. The economy here is just a little bit higher than when we were cruising at six knots. And then, okay, this one, okay, it does. Oh, oh I, I press something. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you see, the, the output is, of course, higher, but you have to look at this one. This is like consumption numbers, like one hour per kilometer. So it's actually not that much higher uh, per nautical mile, the consumption, than when we were doing like eight knots or something like that. Yeah, wow. No, I, I think we So you can go approximately the same distance in this speed. But if you want to go really far, we can go obviously down to one knot like every other electric boat and do super long range. <laughs> wow, so 20 knots, so it's going quite far. Let me show you now what it looks like. So in the back, uh, the waves or the, the thing, what do you call it? it it's slightly yeah, different. Yeah, the wave or the wake wash is a little bit uh, different. It's flatter, we make less waves and that's because we have a more efficient technology. But ah. we can actually play around with it because we have flaps in the back. So we can also make more waves if we want to do that for like wakeboard or water ski or whatever. So this is this is this is fast enough for uh, for what you call it when you have a you're pulling a guy with a ski. Yeah, yeah we have done ski. it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so how many knots is needed for that kind of activity? Sorry, how many? How many knots is needed for that kind of uh, activity? That depends on uh, preferences, but uh, maybe like 15 to 25 knots or something like that. Okay, let me see how fast are we doing it. We're doing 20 knots. Okay, so yeah, now. The battery is okay, so, and 60 kilowatts, so you're pulling around uh, only around uh, half C. So we can actually do this for around two hours, maybe. Yeah, like mentioned initially. Now we can see actually the numbers. And I feel like, can okay, we sit down here? Oh, yeah. Sit down here a little bit. So, yes. okay, I mean, it's still a little bit semi bumpy, right? But it should be less bumpy than if we don't have the air cushion. Yes. It, it depends a little bit on the wave pattern. If you have a wave from directly in the front, it's really like a, like a hovercraft. But if we, otherwise we're more like a catamaran and we, we actively control the comfort. So it's very cool also. We can play around with different modes, like eco mode, sport mode. And if we do sport, we can, we can force it more down into the turns, but then we have a more higher consumption. So it depends what you want to, to okay. optimize for. So that's what we're building with the sport eco mode. And we also will add like water ski mode and also <laughs> fun mode. So when you go slow, we can also jump up and down with the cushion. Oh, yeah. You, you know, you know, <laughs> so you can, like these uh, American cars. You know, Mercedes. Yes. Mercedes, they have this, this, uh, uh, they actually did it for sand driving to get. Yes, get, I saw the video yeah, just yeah. on YouTube. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So also if you're like stuck in ice, you can like jump out of the ice. Yeah. Or if it's very, very shallow water, you can like lift it like 10, 20 centimeters out of water and go very shallow. So 
turn we're playing around with all of these modes but right now it's like just getting the the core very robust and uh, and we're, and like efficient so that's yeah. what we're working on first <laughs> i wonder so if if the front fan is running at uh, five kilowatts yeah would it pay off if you run it at 10 kilowatt uh that's that's this that's the really the core core of our software to find that threshold because it affects how it handles the waves how it turns so it's, it's like a, it's quite complicated actually because it's a combination of the fan the angle on this flap the motor trim tilt uh it's, <laughs> this is an outboard uh and these control fins that we have so we use all of these uh, control surfaces to optimize the overall performance of the boat so we can we have a lot like we have much more degrees of freedom compared to conventional boats which we can utilize to play around for example with this jump mode yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so it means that so yes yeah, stay tuned for uh, updates and that's like 4g software update we can push it from the from the office so ah. it's, it's in the pipeline but it's not on the top of the <laughs> to-do list <laughs> Well, it's cool, it's cool, it's like different technology, but still works and it's still electric. And you know, if this was a hundred, this is 150 horsepower, right? This outboard. Yeah, 90 kilowatt continuous, I think. Yeah, so if we had a 150 horsepower fossil outboard, we we would not be able to have a conversation like this. That would be much more noisy, yes. It would be really loud. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but we can also put that, like a much larger motor on this one and do super fast boats. So that's like we just have lower friction right so we can we can do super fast if we want but this one is optimized for around 20 25 knots that's a typical speed for this type of boats but what? other projects projects we work with are optimized for more like 30 but that's primarily just the motor and battery size that needs to be adjusted yeah we're gonna, we're gonna test something here so um we're gonna see if the if the front fan turns off what happens then we have to then slow down a little bit Okay. Uh -uh. So now, whoa, look at the consumption, holy crap, 4.5, what? Wait, so now the system is off, and if we go fast, well, can, what happens if we go 20 knots now with the fans off? No, you, you can't actually, because uh, the, the top speed increases so much when you turn on the fan uh -uh. system. But what about if you I think if we put a much larger motor in the back, we can probably do it, but uh, that's a little bit on what we want to optimize for. <laughs> well, what, what if we go for, uh, let's say, 10 knots? Will it, the sure. consumption go through the roof? Holy macaroni! <laughs> <laughs> okay, the system is actually working really well. So then we get roughly 5, 5.3, okay. And then at only 12 knots, but you need a minimum speed for it to activate. Or so now it activates around 10 knots. Okay. Just for convenience, because that's what, that's when you want to go fast. Is it is it just me, or is it is the nose a little bit lower? And yes, it, the, because it lifts up. Activated now. Okay. If it activated then. Oh 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 oh! oh then the nose goes up. <laughs> oh, I can feel it. <laughs> yeah. And then, wow, way lower consumption. Whoa, <laughs> wow, look at this, this is magic. We, were, we are now cruising faster and the consumption is almost half. So this, this technology surely works for sure. And actually, I think the noise in the front, there wasn't that much extra. Okay. Most of the noise comes from waves and wind in a boat like this. Yeah. And there's probably some potential to having less noise yes this is a prototype so we're gonna do pre like a little bit different architecture in the front to completely take away the noise on the on the production vessels cool and you see now that we're cruising look, wow, look at this so now when we're cruising at only six knots the consumption is still quite high okay we're back in the shore and we're gonna try fast charging now oh <laughs> this is the first time i see dc fast charging on a boat and uh activation so then you have to activate it via the app it's um it's uh which which provider is it charging Press oh, okay yeah yeah plug so it's called plug and it's the same app they use oh it's um no it's not Ebony. no wait, it's Ebony. which one again yeah i think they're owned or in collaboration with Ebony. it's plug and they work with maritime chargers and it's for this type of sizes it's the exact same architecture that electric car uses let me check so it. you see type 2 conventional uh -huh. AC and then they have a variety of DC solutions 
and they work closely with chem power. Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay, it's doing a handshake. And they have uh, this one is a 40 kilowatt uh, DC charger, mobile. And then they also uh, are actively building out uh, much faster chargers, like 150 and 400 kilowatt. But still, CCS type 2. Hmm. Oh yeah, we are now charging. <laughs> We're getting 38 kilowatt, look at this. Um, so we click here. Yeah, I want to see more stats about the battery. So, uh, five, uh, sorry, 367 volt, 103 amp, huh? Oh yeah, this also shows you that the power unit, this is uh, some chem power specific, pin temperature. But you see here, this is funny, so it says that vehicle limit, yeah. Well, because it's, you know, it's made for vehicle, not the boat, but. Yeah, so it's actually fast charging now. And I think this is more or less the, uh, close to the limitation of the, of the uh, chem power anyway. So yeah, there is some stuff over there also, um, uh, the charging screen, but uh, it wasn't, it was a little bit buggy. Remember that this is a, a prototype, so, <laughs> but at least we are fast charging now. <laughs> cool, man. Yeah. Is it changing? Ah, 52% now. Okay. Yeah, cool. Switch here again. Let's just check here. There. Nice and flat charging curve. Uh, Right, but I think that's it. We did a nice test uh, right? Well, a test uh, sail, I guess, what you call it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm still land crab, but it was always uh, fun to try something new, uh, the technology. I was quite impressed when we turned on and off that fan uh, to see the, the energy difference thing. Yep. So, but uh, my big question to you is that, are you going to make an only fan button on that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe. <laughs> oh, you might be sued by OnlyFans. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. But anyway, you guys can check out more of this. Uh, just look in the description. And yeah, so I, I think it's awesome that we have more uh, boat technology out there. There's not only one solution, which is the hydrofoiling. You can also have this kind of air cushion, air hockey style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, okay. yeah. Um, I think uh, that's it. Do you have anything else you want to say? No, oh, we're looking forward to show you the, the actual production boat that we will have on water next year. Okay. This is a prototype, but it, it, it works. But uh, soon we will commercialize in leisure and industrial segments. And, and also, uh, we'll hope, looking forward to, to bringing you on board of those next well, year. Yeah, but did we talk about the price, by the way, on this? So this is a prototype that, that, we, that we work with in the company, but uh, for the leisure pro project with Ripple Boat, Friedenbö project, uh, it's going to be a 10 meter long, this is 8 meter. And um, you can go online to see the, the, the actual price, I think it's around uh, three, 400,000 euros. So it's approximately the same as these other high speed electric uh, or planing electric uh, vessels in the segment. Hmm, okay. But it's a really nice uh, boat, uh, the, the Ripple project, so Ripple, check it out. Yeah. yeah, okay. So I think my impression is that, okay, it <coughs> might be uh, not maybe the most efficient technology, but it's at least way more affordable and still pretty efficient. Yeah, that's my takeaway for yeah. it. <laughs> but anyway, okay. I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.